Guys, I'm in Canada shooting a Netflix show and I really wanted to do an experiment with snow. So for today's experiment, we're gonna see if we can create a sled out of great stuff foam and duct tape with Pete and Mel. Nick's side, Pete's side. Okay, that's that. Now we're gonna shape it. Have a little nose to it, a little curve. Just like that. Oh man, it feels really good. It does. Let's take this. Look at that. Because it looks like this, we're gonna name it the Spaghetti Flyer. <laughs> How abundant, dude. Let's go test her out. Oh yeah! It works, it works so well. The Spaghetti Flyer is a total success. This is for TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> So a lot of you guys have been tagging me in a video of like, oh my god, is there a megalodon in the Marianas Trench? Um, no. Megalodons were coastal creatures. They lived in warm, shallow, tropical waters. So we would definitely know if they were still real. And basically the pressure at the bottom of the Marianas Trench is so astronomically like strong that it crushes anything with a backbone. So literally the only thing that lives down there are like microorganisms and like squishy like deep sea sea cucumbers. So I promise you there's no megalodon down there and I really wish like these people would stop doing ocean facts unless they like I don't know stop making fake ones because then I have to answer these questions for like the 80th time and it's really frustrating because like you can just do your googling there's no way that's possible also megalodon is definitely extinct it went extinct during the Pleistocene era um yeah around the first ice age so yeah it's, no there's no megalodon in the Marianas Trench there like never was so yeah thanks for the fake facts like please stop SOS one day me and my classmates were on a Zoom call with our teacher for science. We kept writing WAP in the chat and our teacher had enough and said what is WAP why does everyone keep saying it? This guy in our class said it stands for work and paper. The guy said we were doing our WAP right now and our teacher said great. Our teacher then said Jennifer show me your WAP right now. We all started laughing and our teacher was confused. He kept saying why won't you show me your WAP? We were all dying from laughter and our teacher got upset and left the Zoom call. We all sat there kinda speechless and we all just sorta left one by one after. And I oop. Alright, here's how to have some fun on the weekends with the boys. You're gonna need this bottle of a uh, secret chemical, some aluminum foil, and a bottle. And some gloves, because the liquid here is not very safe. Dump out the bottle. Start balling up the foil into a uh, ball about this big. And put it in the bottle until it's about this full. For a disclaimer, this is a science project. Also, don't do this by a school or a police station because it's kind of loud. Here's the bottle. Alright, pour it in so it's just matching the same amount as the aluminum foil. Cap it, throw it, and run. That work, dude. Y así es como se extrae el ADN del kiwi. Os lo voy a enseñar y es súper sencillito en casa. Lo pelamos y lo machacamos dentro de una bolsita de plástico. Luego añadimos dos cucharadas de jabón, media de sal y medio vasito de agua y removemos. Añadimos esta solución jabonosa a la mezcla del kiwi triturado y pasamos por un filtro de café. Al eluido del kiwi con la solución jabonosa añadimos la misma cantidad de etanol al 70% y podremos observar la formación de unos precipitados gelatinosos blanquecinos que constituyen el DNA. Absolutamente fascinante. So you guys ask for the orange one and the green one. Things in nature that confuse me to the point of making me very mad. Number one, eel reproduction. So we have no idea how eels are made. We have dissected them and we can't find their reproductive organs and we've never seen them have sex. What makes me especially mad about this is that I looked it up. There are eel farmers. Are they not doing their jobs? Number two is the wasp fig symbiotic relationship. Um, so apparently a big part of the wasp life cycle is to go find a fig to lay eggs and die in. I've seen like 40 wasps in the past week and not a single fig. How are there enough figs for all the wasps? And how do the wasps know to go find a fig? That's ridiculous. 
Number three is carcinization. Um, this is the process in which animals just evolve into crabs for no reason without being related to crabs in any way. This makes me mad because I love being me and I think that's enough and I shouldn't have to be a crab. Scientists at the University of Washington have developed a program called Deep Squeak, which allows humans to hear rat calls and communication that were previously too high for their hearing range. Using this technology, scientists discovered that rats use a combination of pitch and length of sound to create a type of syntax, aka rats have a language. Scientists have identified at least 20 calls that mimic words. They've also identified positive and negative calls. And that male rat calls get more complex if they sense a female nearby as they're trying to woo them with a courtship song. This same technology also revealed that rats can laugh and that they emit laughter when anticipating play with other rats out of excitement or when being tickled by humans during playtime. I wonder what Pickles has to say about his breakfast this morning. I've always wanted to make an animal hybrid spliced with an animal hybrid. And that's exactly what I did when I took my cat dog DNA and mixed it with my chicken DNA in my home laboratory. After fertilizing an egg, it only took four months for it to hatch. This is what it looked like when it came out. I bottle fed it until it was fully grown. And although this was half bird, half cat dog, it still could not fly, even though it had wing-like appendages. This is one of the cutest and most cuddliest animals I have ever created. Thanks for following. Bye.